to say the lost and he died on
do this again. This time, let us make a joyful noise. Everybody bring your voices together and say, Hey! Yes. Hey! Yes. Bless the Lord, Bless the Lord for, all for all he's done. Oh, he has done marvelous things. We're a hundred, we're a hundred. Oh, Bless the Lord. Come on, everybody, I'm feeling it now. Let's lift our hands to Jesus one more time and say it again. Hey! Bless the Lord for all he's done. Come on, let's praise. How many want to have a party in Jesus' name? Let's lift our hands and our voices and say, Jubilee! Hallelujah! Jesus, did he 
set you free. Did he break the bondage of sin? Come on and praise it. Set me free. Some smooth Christian jazz. Come on with it. Yep. My, 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 my goodness. <laughs> Whoa. Beloved, this is the day that the Lord has made. We do rejoice and we're glad in it. We're grateful for it. Thank God for every one of you joining in today with this edition of Midday Manor. Welcome to May. Listen, next to January, May is the greatest month. My national holiday comes later, but May is just a good month. You know, May, May, May flowers, you know, after the April showers. And just May is a good month. The fifth month of the year, I speak grace to your life. I speak it greatly, five times more than ever before. And this fifth month, five worth of grace. Hallelujah. 
Father God, give us ears to hear, hearts to receive, lives to be changed for the better. Father, take us out of self. Use me for somebody else. Cause us to walk in path of righteousness and stand on your word in truth. Let the power of the Holy Ghost rest, rule, and abide. Strengthen us by your spirit. And Lord, I know that you will use this show, Yielded Servant, to speak to somebody's heart, somebody's life, somebody's situation. Lord, I don't know who's listening today, Lord God, but I do know that you are the God that sets up divine appointments. You're the God that causes us to grab on to your word, walk in it, talk in it, live by it, and serve you with all of our heart. Lord, I'm praying for some man, some woman, some young man, some young woman, a family, an individual, Lord God, that may be broken, that may be needing your touch. And Lord, through your word today, you would speak and by your power, you would deliver. Thank you for all you've done and all that you're doing now is what you've already done. Lord, you are the God of the done. Bring that which is perfect. Bring that which is powerful. Bring that which is perpetual into the temporal. And God, you arise and every enemy be scattered. We come against lack. We come against debt. We come against poverty. We come against every work of brokenness. And we speak a word today that will prosper us. Not stuff, but in the spirit. And where their needs, they're already met because your divine provision has made it so. Bless us, Lord. And Lord, you arise and every enemy be scattered. In Jesus' name, amen. Hold up your Bibles, everybody. Join me, amen, as we hold up our Bibles. And let's declare together. I have it today at Pad. Lord, I thank you. Come on. Lord, I thank you that I have my Bible. It is my personal copy a basic instruction before leaving earth. I am a believer, not a doubter. I'm not just a hearer, but I'm also a doer. And my life is so much more the bless because I hear and I obey the word of the living God. Thank you, Father, that your word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path, giving me present clarity and future illumination. I hide your word in my heart, Father, that I will not sin against you. Give us clarity of thought, understanding, utterance, and hearing. And Lord, you arise and every enemy be scattered. Because we're here today, we agree with your power and your purpose for us. That we will not be distracted. We will hear you clearly and communicate you clearly. Communicate you clearly. Lord, this is our prayer and our expectation. In Jesus' name, I'm going to leave here. Come on. Better than I came here. In Jesus' name, amen. Look with me as we continue in our series out of uh, the practice of faith. The practice of faith. While you're turning to Hebrews 11 and 6, amen, we want to remind you right behind me, this powerful mother-daughter affirmation team. Saturday, May 11th, 11.30 a.m. There's limited seating available. Tickets are $35. You're going to have a wonderful meal, classes on etiquette, spoken word, and power regarding all that God would have as affirmation. We're going to be honoring some young ladies who are moving and transitioning from middle school to high school, and just some ladies that are doing great things. Now, this is a collaborative effort with Life Builders Church and Pikesville Middle School, and we're excited about it. You want to come. You want to be there. We have space left. You want to come. You want to be there. You need to reach us. You need to dial today, 443-776-0255. If the number is tied up, please leave a message and we'll call you back. We do get calls, and sometimes with the only one person manning the lines at this time, my God, we can't get to everybody all at once, but we're working on it. 
443-776-0255. You can also email us at lbcministry at yahoo.com. That's lbcministry at yahoo.com. Listen, we're not competing with anybody. There's a lot going on on Mother's Day weekend. There's concerts, there's other teas and fashion shows. Beloved, there's a number that we all can achieve and we can sell all of it out because there's enough people in this area to fill everything. That's why I don't compete with pastors in churches. There's enough people that every church will fill. There still be people that need to come. Black, white, Latino, Asian. We need to broaden our mindset. We're not competing for a demographic. We're not competing as if we're the only church. I know there are churches that have several locations. I applaud them. We're working on the same. I'll talk to you about that later. But even if we have several locations, north, south, east, and west, there will still be people needing to come to hear the word. So this com competing competition, foolishness, and waste of time, nah, you're not going to get that with life builders. And I thank God for every church doing something for mothers. I applaud everybody. I applaud everybody. And we're doing something too. Want to be a part of it? Call us, 443-776-0255. Write us, email lbcministry at yahoo.com. Now, Hebrews 11.6. I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. And beloved, I want to teach this. I want to discuss it badly. <laughs> so let's hear it now. Hebrews 11, 6 from the New King James. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Talking about the Lord. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Can I read that again? But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. This is lesson number five in our series, The Practice of Faith. We're talking today from the topic, why faith pleases God. You want to get this. Why faith? pleases God. Now, let me remind you how I define, how I describe, and how I explain what faith is. Okay? First of all, faith is the word of God and my response to it. Faith is what God said and my response to it. All right? I hear his word. That's part of my response. I believe and I receive his word. That's part of my response. Then I obey his word. Oh, yeah. Then I make willful adjustment to what I say out of my mouth, how I think in my mind and with my heart, and how I respond from my lifestyle and my living in order to allow his word to empower me. Can I say that again? What is faith? How do I describe? Bishop, that's a little long. Why can't you just say it is a evidence of things not seen? The faith is, my God, the, 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 the power that comes from God. Why, why can't you say that? Because, beloved, I want to make sure you understand faith is not a mystery. Faith is not magic. Even when you use Hebrews 11.1, 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Evidence is long lasting. Substance, substance is proof to the senses. So you want to understand that faith is the response to the word of God. 
you read it, but many things in the word of God may be hidden from sight, but you got to believe. Mm. Faith does not always materialize right away. Or I should say, what you're in faith for may not materialize to the natural realm right away. But if God said it, from the time God said it until it manifests in the flesh, it's done. The moment God said it, it's done. I believe that with all my heart. What has to happen is the transfer from the eternal realm where God is to the temporal realm where we are. Now, there are various factors that hold things up. There are various factors that keep things from manifesting in the temporal realm. But as far as God's concerned, once he said it, <coughs> excuse me, it's done. Y'all got to hear me. Once God said it, it's done. So faith is the word of God and my response to it. I hear it. Yeah, I believe it and receive it in my heart. I obey it. And then I make willful adjustment to what I'm saying out my mouth, how I'm thinking in my mind, and how I respond from my lifestyle and living in order to allow his word to empower me. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Also, let me remind you of this fact. Some of you may never have heard this before. But if you've been around me in ministry any length of time, you've heard me say that God and his word are one. God and his word are one. When God speaks, he speaks himself. The Bible says in John 1, the, 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 the letter Okay, the gospel of John, the gospel of John. What John said in John 1, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God, not a God, as some false cults put in their New World Translation of Scriptures, not throw rocks, just correcting an error. The word was God. The word is God. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. God is a position. God is not his name, it's his occupied place. But the almighty God spoke and what he said became flesh and dwelt among us. And the Bible says we beheld his glory. <laughs> he the only begotten of the father, Jesus, full of grace and truth. I know some are going around saying, that ain't Jesus' name. Beloved, I am English. I speak English. And so if I don't call him Yeshua, don't get offended because I'm not Hebrew, okay? If I said George in Spanish, it's Jorge, okay? If I said John in Spanish, it's Juan. So I'm not Latino. I am not any other but an American that speaks English. Because I call him Jesus does not minimize who he is. He gave me my tongue in English. And in the tongue he gave me, his name is Jesus. I think we need to separate ourselves from all this petty stuff. Yeshua, Joshua. In the Hebrew tongue, the J is often pronounced Yash, okay? So Yahshua, not Joshua. In English, it's Joshua, but in Hebrew, it's Yahshua, okay? I'm not Hebrew. I'm English. I speak English. I'm a man who's black. So my language, natural to me, is what I speak. So Jesus, the word made flesh and dwells among us. All right? I could call him Yeshua. He still answered. <laughs> if I'm Chinese, I can say the name Jesus. And how Chinese say it. Russian. And how Russian say it. 
But it's not the tongue, it's the name and the power in the name. Why you say all that, Bishop? Because we're getting caught up on missing rudiments like faith because of things that are not worth getting caught up on, okay? Let me remind you again that God and his word are one. The almighty God and his word, according to John 1, is the word. Now, that's something that Dr. Mike Murdoch says that I love. Uh, Dr. Mike Murdoch, a powerful man of God, just turned 75 this year. God bless you, man of God. He's married, new wife. And uh, Mike Murdoch, we love you here in the Carrington household. And uh, we read your word, we see it into your ministry, and we thank God for you. You're a powerful man of God. But Mike Murdoch often says this, God's greatest passion is to be believed. God's greatest passion is to be believed. I wholeheartedly agree with this statement. God's greatest passion is to be believed. Yeah. Just like a woman's greatest passion or greatest need is security. Women want to be secure. Men need affirmation many times. Validation. God's greatest passion is to be believed. Hmm. I believe this wholeheartedly, especially in light of what the scripture says out of Hebrews eleven six, 6, which is our text for today. But without faith, man, I'm getting excited. It is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Again, reading from the New King James. But without faith, my hearing, my obey, my believing, my receiving, my making adjustment to the God said, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of those who diligently seek him. So let's get into the lesson, the meat of it. I love this word. I love it. I love it. That's why I get excited. Faith pleases God. That's, that, that's the topic, how faith pleases God. So let's get into it. Faith pleases God in order to have heard believed, received, and obeyed his word, we have to willfully get involved. Faith pleasing God. You know, I just said in order to have faith, hearing, obeying, believing, hearing, believing, receiving, obeying, making an adjustment, you got to be willing to do this. You got to make yourself become willingly involved. We have to involve, hear me, our senses to hear, to read, and to respond. If you said good morning to me and I hear you, I respond by saying good morning back. Not what's good about it, that's rude. But because you took the time to willfully greet me, it's proper for me to respond to willfully greet you. By an act of my will, I respond to you by how you, by your will, said good morning. <laughs> Hear me, beloved. Our will, God have mercy, is what causes us to believe, receive, and act on what God said. Why are you going through all this? Now I'm showing you how faith pleases God. Yes, Lord. Our will causes us to believe God's word after we receive God's word because we willfully hear God's word. Our will, come on, you got a will. I got a will, you got a will. All God's children got a will. 
I'm not talking about what you're talking about when you die and who gets what. I'm talking about that drive in you. I'm talking about that active part of you that either wants to or don't want to. All of us have a will. And when it comes to God, his will is best. We don't always agree. We don't always think so. Sometimes we got to find out the hard way, but his will is best. Can I get a witness? Okay. Our will made it possible to seek him. I, by my will, I'm going to tell you my salvation experience. One day, the Lord started working on me. Many of you don't know my testimony. I'm not going to take up all the time to give it, but I was a wretch undone. <laughs> I was sinking very, very deep in sin very fast. And as a young man, I was rebellious. I was disobedient. My parents were good parents. My mother and my father were both filled with the Holy Spirit. They were walking with God. My father was a deacon in the church. My mother uh, and my father taught Sunday school, uh, taught what we used to call YIP2, Young People's Training Union, Sunday evenings at six o'clock. And uh, they were exemplary. They were exemplary uh, by way of their walk, but I was rebellious. I wasn't doing nothing they said. And I was determined as a young man, I'm going to be Charlie Carrington, Charlie Carrington's way. And Charlie Carrington's way got me suspended from school three times prior to me getting out of the fourth grade for bad behavior. I was always larger for my age and folk thought I was older than I was because that's how I carried myself in many cases. So I hung with the older guys and the older guys were always getting in trouble, but I was always one getting caught. And I didn't get the message that this ain't the way I'm supposed to live. Till one day I'm sitting in the house of God and because of my behavior, my parents wouldn't let me sit alone in church. Too many deacons were coming to my dad saying, Charlie, uh, uh, Deacon Carrington, you gotta get a hold of your son. Uh, he talking in church and, and making noise and loud and playing. Uh, and my father said, you ain't embarrassing me no more. So one Sunday night, we in church. And I never forget Deacon Elihu Johnson. He's going to be with the Lord now. But I grew up at First United Church, 3400 Copley Road. People like Elma Pace and Elihu Johnson, man, these brothers used to sing under the anointing power. And one night, Elihu Johnson was singing a song when he reached down his hands for me. I was lost and undone without God and his son when he reached down his hand for me. And uh, I started feeling something, but I was fighting it and resisting it. Then my pastor then, uh, a, he's, he's now, he's with the Lord, but he was Bishop then, Monroe Randolph Saunders Sr. And um, that was my pastor, my father in the faith. He got up with a reprise. And he began to belt that song out too. And I just could not hold the tears back anymore. I didn't go to the altar, but I sat there crying. And my father, I never forget, grabbed my hand. And um, he began to pray because he knew God was dealing with me. And um, later that year, maybe about a few months later, there was a revival that broke out in First United Church. It was a young adult department of over 200 people, 200 young adults. And um, I caught the chicken pox. So when the revival broke out uh, in December, um, actually right after Thanksgiving, we were off for school uh, for Thanksgiving. That revival broke out. And um, we were going back to school and all, but I caught chicken pox. And... Um, I couldn't get there for the revival services. I mean, young people were being filled with the Holy Ghost. There was over 200 of us being filled with the Holy Ghost, I'm telling you. And um, I had the chicken pox and I couldn't go out. I was hearing the reports. This one got filled. That one got filled. This was in 1972. This one got filled. That one got filled. And I knew these guys and they was rough. <laughs> I ain't calling no names, but we were all getting in trouble together. And um, all kinds of stupid stuff we were doing. I ain't going back to that. And uh, I was doing my stupid stuff. And 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 I was holy, hungry, 
to be filled with the Holy Ghost like my friends. So I remember the last night of the revival. God had that revival wait for me. After the chicken pot virus had expired and out of my body and I had the scratches on my face and the marks, but I was whole. I was healed. No more chicken pox. And I remember going out that Friday night with my mama. My dad had to work late. We got to ride to church. And um, that Friday night, December 9th, 1972, I got filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm going to call these names because these brothers are still in my life. Mark Payne. Yes, the Mark Payne. Jason Saunders. Yes. Sammy Barnes. Yes. We had an altar that needed kind of to be cleaned up a little bit. And we got down at that altar. Jason on one side, Bishop Saunders' son, Sammy on another side, Mark Payne in front of me. And we, we, we back then were tearing. <laughs> and they were saying, come on, Charlie. Come on, Charlie. And I'm there at the altar just rocking back and forth, rocking back and forth. And the altar was rocking. We all was rocking that altar that night. We didn't break it, but we rocked it. And, oh, God. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. And I remember they were telling me one in one ear, come on, Charlie, let go. And another in another ear, come on, Charlie, hold on. Mark Payne in front of me. And finally, I came through with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. Now, that's how I received the Holy Ghost. And my God, I knew I had received the Holy Ghost because the boy that went back to school after the chicken pox wasn't the same boy that wasn't coming to school because he had the chicken pox. It was so much of a difference. My fourth grade teacher couldn't deal with me anymore. She, she couldn't deal with the new Johnny. The new Johnny was behaving. The new Johnny was getting good grades. The new Johnny, Charlie Carrington, to some that know me from way back, the new Johnny was changed. It got so bad that the teacher was trying to find ways to mess with me. I ain't going to call her name. And um, it, it, it opened up a door. I was going to Arlington Elementary, and uh, a door opened for me to transfer to Cross Country Elementary. So the rest of my fourth grade year to my fifth grade year, my mom had the insight to get me transferred. And I remember Miss Agni, whose class I went to, her son Melvin and I went to Polly together. This teacher looked at my record and said, Johnny, you're not the little boy that I felt compelled to let in my class. You're not him. <laughs> oh my God. And there was such a drastic change, turnover in my life. So I went to cross country, went through the exercise, got out of cross country. Then I transferred or actually went to Falstaff from fifth grade. I went to sixth grade at Falstaff Middle, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. And the rest of my school career is what it is. But the Holy Ghost made such a change in my life, okay? Why do I say that? Because from that day forward, I began to diligently seek the Lord as a young man. I was called to preach at the age of 12. You know, here I am today still preaching. The majority of my life I've been serving God. But I've come to realize that faith pleases God because faith is actively, hear my words, seeking him and also wanting him. I wanted Jesus. I wanted Jesus in my life. God have mercy. Now, I'm about to close, but I've got to make this point. We who understand relationships understand that no one wants to be discarded, treated like they don't matter and treated as non-essential. Can I say that again? No one wants to be discarded, treated like they don't matter, and treated as non-essential. When you come to Jesus, 
you and the Father are now in relationship. Jesus came to redeem us from sin and to reconnect us back to the Father. That's why he came. I'm putting out a book shortly, The Reasons Why Jesus Came. And uh, teaching that I did, the Lord told me to make a book and write that book. I'm working on it because we need to know. But one of those reasons was he came to seek and to save the loss. Yes, he did. One of the songs, if you hear from the beginning of our broadcast, as we're preparing for today's lesson, was a song that my brothers and I collaborated on. Me, Tim, and Dave wrote the song, You Found Me. And in the beginning, my brother David was singing, you came to seek and save the lost. You died on Calvary to pay the cost. And I know, I know that Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Man, him and John Taylor put a hurting on that song. <laughs> Deacon John Taylor, Pastor David Carrington. And man, mm, Jesus came to reconnect us in fellowship, in relationship with God. God takes responsibility for his part in relationship and he takes it seriously. Did you hear me what I said? God takes responsibility and his part in relationship, seriously. Yeah, yeah, he does. He loves us. The father gave his only begotten son for us. He wants us. Jesus died to save us and to reconnect us to the father. Then the Holy Ghost was sent to live in us and empower us. And he has the absolute best for us in mind. When we put our faith in God, by grace we are saved through faith, not of ourselves. It's the gift of God, lest any man should boast. But we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Beloved, you got to hear me. You got to understand. When we by faith, accept the blood sacrifice of the Lord Jesus. When we, by faith, accept the price that he paid, we are pleasing God. No, no, no. I was not there when Jesus was whipped with that cat of nine tails. But I believe it because the Bible said he was wounded for my transgressions, bruised. For my iniquity. He ain't talking about spiritually, he's talking about physically. There were eyewitness of uh, accounts that said they saw the whipping he took. Historical accounts back it up. Who am I to say it ain't true? Or who am I to like some unfortunate religious beliefs? Say that he didn't die on the cross, but he swooned or he fainted. And that's why he rose three days later. Look, man, the Bible is clear. They stuck him in the side because his heart stopped beating. The blood and the uh, fluid, lymph fluid, water, basically gathered. And when the Roman soldier pierced him under the rib, the water and the blood came out, signifying he was dead. The Roman government agreed he was dead. The centurion not only agreed he was dead, he also agreed he was the son of God. Pilate's wife tried to tell him no had nothing to do with his crucifixion, this kangaroo court foolishness, because she had been troubled in dreams to leave Jesus alone. Pilate, driven by fear, Pilate, driven by intimidation from Caiaphas and the others, went and crucified Jesus. Pilate even though they had him crucified because they were envious of him. So all this happened, right? I can't come along now. Johnny come lately. 
and say that Jesus didn't die for me, he didn't die for you. Although you don't believe it, he still died for you. He gave his life for you. He shed his blood for you. Because you don't believe it doesn't eradicate that he did it. And he did it for you. Oh, my God. Beloved, listen, listen, listen. We need to understand the truth of the gospel. Jesus came to seek and save the lost. He came so we may have relationship with God. Connect us back to the Father. The horizontal part of the cross was for us to relate to each other. But the vertical part of the cross was for us to relate to God. On the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. There the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now I'm happy all the day. I no longer just see with these. I see in the realm of the spirit, by the spirit. And I am in a relationship with Jesus. And he, by the power of the Father, wants to be believed. So how does faith please God? Because I choose to believe. I choose to obey because I heard the word and I'm coming to him with my all. That's how faith pleases God. I choose. Just like every relationship has to have willing participants in order to thrive. Every relationship has to have willing participants in order to be meaningful to all involved. We didn't come so God can associate with us. We came to have relationship with the Father through Jesus Christ. Again, I repeat, we are saved by grace, the unmerited favor, the divine just because of God through faith. The fact that I heard the word, I Believe the word, I receive the word, I obey the word, and then I make adjustment. I came to Jesus as I was, and so did you. Weary, wounded, and sad, but just like me, you also found in him a resting place. And I know you can testify he has made you glad. Father, I've done what you told me. I spoke the word, and now, Lord, I trust you to give the increase. Signs and wonders always follow the word. And Lord, as your servant, I come before you. Lord, not in arrogance, not in anything but humility, trusting you to prove yourself as a result of this word. Somebody today needed to hear it. Somebody today will hear it. Somebody will hear it in the future that don't know you, that has turned away or don't believe what you have done Somebody has been believing a lie that they already saved. They just don't know it. That gospel of inclusion is a lie. We all must willingly come to you. An act of our will to say yes to you and no to the enemy. Now, Lord, I've done what you told me. Perfect your word in my heart. Sanctify me according to the word you've spoken. And God, you arise and every enemy be scattered in the strong, mighty, powerful name of Jesus. Lord, do your work, do your will, have your way. And no weapon formed against us, no backlash, no retaliation will inhibit the people that are hearing today from not just hearing, but receiving, believing, obeying, and making adjustment. By faith, we come to you. That pleases you because your greatest passion is to be believed. And we believe you and we act on our belief in the strong name of Jesus. Today, I wanna know if you giving your life to Christ, it is my desire to know. I want you to be able to know that we're praying for you. We're testifying about the grace of God and the goodness of God. And we want you to receive that. We want you to hear it. We want you to walk in it and believe it. So beloved, I'm saying, Call us at 443-776-0255. Write us at our email, lbcministry at yahoo.com. Then we also have our website, 
lbcbaltimore.org, lbcbaltimore.org. You can reach us those three ways. Phone, 443-776-0255. Email, lbcministry at yahoo.com. Website, lbcbaltimore.org. Beloved, we love you. Now, two things I want to, actually three. First of all, don't forget the women's tea. There's a space is left, but there's limited space. We don't want you to miss it. Got a call today. Somebody wants tickets. Thank you. And I'm looking forward to them being there. I'm not going to be there necessarily, but I'm looking forward to those that come. Those ladies, it is mother, daughter, guardian, daughter. And, um, you know, my wife is very capable of holding down the fort. <laughs> Oh, my God. Don't tell her. I'm going to sneak off to the golf range. Don't tell her. I'm going to hit some balls. Anyway, I, 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 um, I, um, shh. <laughs> I know she hears me. But I'm excited about the mother-daughter tea. Saturday, May 11th, 1130, Pikesville Middle School, 7701, Seven Mile Lane. There's no sales at the door. Please don't come to the door. Please don't. Please don't, because we probably will not be prepared for you food-wise. So you got to get your ticket in advance. Call us, 443-776-0255. Write us, lbcministry at yahoo.com, or just go ahead and send the money. Cash App is available for Life Builders Church. That is dollar sign Life Builders Church, Builders with an S, Church, or PayPal. That's paypal.me slash lifebuilderschurch.com, okay? So $35 per person. Don't miss it. It's going to be worth it. It's going to be powerful. Also, number two, we are in worship this Sunday, live and in person. Pikesville Middle School is where we worship, 7701, 7 Mile Lane, 10 a.m. We start on time. And we're going to have a powerful time of worship this first Sunday of the month, Communion Sunday. It's going to be powerful. Got a word for you. And you want to come and hear it. I'll be in worship. The word will be preached. The power of God will be present. Come and be a part. We come as we are. You don't have to worry about whether you got a suit or not. Come on to the house of God. 10 a.m. All right. 7701. Seven Mile Lane, Pikesville, Maryland. 10 a.m. Eastern. Last but not least, I am doing this because I feel led to. I don't usually take an offering and I don't need your money. I'm not begging for your money. But this is the month of May. Yes, my birthday is this month. And there have been many that have been listening to Midday Manor for years. I hear from pastors, I hear from others saying that I enjoy your ministry. And I would like to hear from you financially if the Lord speaks to your heart. This is my birthday month, and it would be wonderful maybe to hear from you. If you don't send money, just send a note. Let us know you are receiving from this wonderful ministry venue. We give Midday Manor our deepest commitment in prayer, and we always seek God for a fresh word. But we don't dare want to come with any pablum or foolishness. We want to come with the full word of the living God. So beloved, if this ministry has blessed you, why not consider sowing? If you don't want to give to me, give the life builders. Give the life builders. Hey, you already got the cash app. That's capital L Life Builders Church, dollar sign, Life Builders Church. But if the Lord moves on your heart, you want to sow into my life, that is dollar sign Bishop J. Charles. The letter J, Charles, Bishop, J. Charles. I ain't on here begging money. I'm just letting you know this 1st of May, 2024, it's my birthday. And some of you want to show appreciation. I'm letting you know how to do it. We also have our uh, Venmo as well as Zelle. And you want to sow through those means. It's the same thing, Bishop J. Charles. Or you can call and get my number. I don't give out my number, although many have it, but you want to sow, you can reach out and we'll answer you. Those three things, again, the women's tea, don't forget it, 
Don't forget, Sunday Worship Live, Pikesville Middle School. And don't forget, May is my birthday month. You want to sow into our lives, be a blessing. I guarantee you I'm good ground because I'm a tither. I'm a sower. And the blessing I receive, I pass on as best I can because I'm good ground. Love you. Heaven smile upon you. Have a wonderful, powerful day. And let God arise and every enemy be scattered. And I got to say this. Go O's. Go O's. Thank you.